we catch up with Heath and Tara, well, mostly Tara, and ask the big questions. What do you have to do, and what do you choose to do? It's The Walking Dead, Season 7, Episode 6. Swear. Hey everyone, D here, and welcome to this week's review of The Walking Dead. So, of course, there's going to be spoilers ahead. That's what reviews do. All right, so good episode this week. Again, getting a little bit more backstory, letting to see what else is going on in the world. And with this, I really enjoyed the fact that we got to sort of catch up with Heath and Tara. And as I said, really mostly Tara here. Uh, Heath was only in for a short little bit. Uh, and I, I really got to say, I enjoyed our time with Tara this week. I just thought it was a blast. She is such an optimist. Her character is so lighthearted, even in all those serious moments when she's being faced down by all the other girls and she's just kind of like, okay, so I guess we could just stand here and chat. And I mean, just the sort of whole lighthearted approach. She's funny. She's, she's great to be around. I just, I really was enjoying um, all of this time with her this week. It was, it was just fun to kind of catch up with her and also a little sad knowing of what it is she's going to come back to or in some ways who she's not going to be able to come back to. So, all right. So this episode, again, we're catching up. We're finding out the difficulties of scavenging out there. Like Tara had said, everything, anything left out there is hidden. And in some ways, it's a little bit of a foreshadowing into the, the camp that she comes across uh, filled with all of the women, which was also very cool. It's like an old summer camp uh, out there by the beach, uh, old Amazon summer camp, you know, since all of the, the men are gone, which we do find out the reasonings why for that. Uh, also quite disheartening and maybe a little bit of a sign of the other dangers the Alexandrians and everyone else don't really know that they have to face. Um, but we've got Heath and Tara, again, not having a very successful time of it in their scavenging bit. Uh, coming across, doing that last little search, and then getting separated and having Tara's whole adventures by herself. Uh, again, like I said, a good episode. Had some nice shots, and it was, again, also fun to see Tara because not only is she kind of funny, uh, but she's got some ninja skills. That whole bit where she was following Cindy. I mean, one, I love that overhead shot where we had sort of Cindy move across and then staying ahead and then Tara moving up behind her. Kind of classic, you know, when they're going to hold the camera, something else is going to happen there. But still, just a beautiful shot. And all of her movements uh, through, she is really, as a character, learned uh, over the ensuing time since we first met her. She's quiet, she's sneaky, she's going through the rest of the brush. Anyway, I just thought she knows how to handle herself uh, as, as some of the Denzians of the camp found out, uh, but really was just kind of a fun episode in that sense, really getting to see her skill set, her ability to deal with people, and how her positive nature really is kind of a breath of fresh air with all of the dour gloom. Even her discussions with Heath earlier on, you know, Heath is at that point where, and, and, and again, we're still reflecting with all of the, the situations that's happened with the saviors. For Heath, it's dealing with the whole outpost, which they thought were you know, uh, the main savior camp, but his idea of like, you know, we have to do what we have to do and looking out for other people, it's just going to be, you're going to take from them and do what you want with them and then, and then move on because that is how survival is. Uh, really a reoccurring theme throughout this is what is it that you have to do? And, and more to the point with Tara's conversation with Cindy was what do you have to do and what do you choose to do? You know, Sydney's whole point was that you didn't have to attack that outpost. You didn't have to attack the. You chose to do it. You may have had good reasons, or you may have believed that you had good reasons, but there were still choices to be made. Uh, and that's really, again, what that conversation with Heath was with Tara is, you know, you feel that you have to do all these things because that is what survival is. Uh, and we have this community out here in the camp that's choosing, that's saying that people do what they have to do, and that's the way that it is. And Cindy and Tara really kind of coming across from a different direction, you know, very similar type of people, as Cindy had pointed out uh, when, when they were leaving and going back over the bridges. You know, 
they're different from the rest of the people around them. They're still holding on to that optimism and realizing that maybe the choices that we make, we can do something different, uh, that we don't have to be obligated by necessity or anything else to make choices, that these choices are in fact still that, choices, something that we choose to do. Uh, now the Amazon camp, as I'm just going to call it, um, very cool. I love the whole setup. I mean, one, it's cool. It's out, in, you know, surrounded by wood, surrounded by, by greenery and everything. Very well hidden. Like I said, probably like some sort of summer camp or boating camp that's just sort of been lost to time at this point. Um, it was very cool. I love the setup, the natural walls they had around. I love the idea of the bells and the ringers and such to not only let them know when somebody's coming in, but to redirect the walkers away that might come into it. And just all of that was really nicely set up. And of course, very reactionary. Uh, the clicking, as opposed to an alarm or yelling or anything out, just a little clicking sound to let people know, go and hide, then go get the guns and do that. Just a, a well-oiled machine. Uh, and of course, it makes sense of why they are that way. Uh, because the big dark story that we find out by the end is that the saviors, again, are responsible for this. They were in a community. They're with the saviors. They tried to stand up to them. Uh, and what did the saviors do? They killed all of the men. Killed all the men, all of the boys that were over 10 years, and just made the women, they're going to keep working for you. you should take out all of the big threats. Uh, which makes sense, because, it, you know, even thinking throughout the episode, it's like, how would you lose all of the guys? I mean, even in an encounter, uh, uh, even in some sort of a battle encounter, there would still be some survivors. I mean, you would have some balance. And they certainly weren't against Heath joining up with them if that was necessary. So it wasn't a choice to get rid of all of the men because they're dangerous or anything like that. Uh, but again, no, it was the saviors uh, coming in, making their mark a whole new level of cruel and evil. And if there's one thing that we keep hearing about the saviors. Um, and even Tina was saying this back uh, in the episode with Daryl when we were checking out all of their camp is, you don't know how bad it can get. And apparently we do. We're just gonna keep finding new levels of, of cruelty uh, that the saviors do to try and enforce their will. And this community is just a result of it. Uh, and a natural reaction to kill anybody that crosses, anybody that comes in, a natural defense that is fear and paranoia having set in. They can create a nice community there, but they're always going to be isolated and eventually they are going to run out of supplies. Yes, they will have fish, but that's going to be all that they have if they keep themselves isolated, which is why Tara and Cindy were making their point is we could open up, we could trade. Again, not realizing the dangers are that are out there. Uh, and of course, they weren't really going to let uh, uh, Terra go anyway. Uh, and I thought that was handled really well. I was suspecting that things weren't going to go all smooth, whenever they're like, yeah, I'll go, I'll go. Well, they just, they all seemed too happy to help escort her out of there. And of course, the idea was to lead her away and kill her, of which Tara showed how tough that she is and how much she was able to hold on uh, until Cindy was able to come and, and, and help affect the rest of her escape. So this is another community. Again, it's nice. They're isolated. That is cool. But what we're really seeing is more fallout from, from the saviors. All right, so again, basically a good episode here, nice and solid, just moving things along. Not a whole lot of big ma major story development here, uh, but there are a few points, of course, as usual, that I do want to point out. One, with the beach walkers. Sorry, I think that's funny. Also, I think it's funny how every group you run into has a different name uh, for the dead. I just think that that's kind of cool. Uh, but we do learn an important lesson in the opening scene, and that is obviously always identify your target. Don't just go stabby stabby against anyone that's there. They may not be dead. They could be alive and cool and funny and nice and someone you want to hang out with. Also, uh, again, much like the clicks there and the bells and everything, I, I loved how quiet the camp was, how they were really controlling the noise that they made. You could tell from all of their activities, everything was very naturally quiet there. And I, I thought that was just a, a very cool approach. 
And Heath, oh man, Heath, I am so glad that he was a stand-up guy. Because, of course, that first shot when he leaves and sort of runs away and Tara's being all covered up, I just, I, you know, it was like, no, man, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. But he's not that guy. He stood up. He was plugging away. He was giving Tara that moment to go. And, of course, we did think that he died at the end. And that was a nice little kind of funky reveal. The only walker that was not covered in sand that was on the bridge there. Um, that was funny. Though, what happened to Heath? That's going to be another question. Did he take off in the RV? Was it someone else? And what is the purpose of that card? Oh, it looks like it had three P's on it. That's going to be something of significant. One, because we haven't seen anything like it before. And two, because Tara back pocketed it. So she's going to be holding on to it. And maybe that's going to open up something interesting. But we do need to find out what happened to Heath. Because as Tara gets back to Alexandria, Heath doesn't appear to be back there yet. So either he's still out hunting or something else happened to him. Probably the something else. Ah, Tara's pistol. Nice little picture on the grip of Lucille. She doesn't know what that means yet. But she's going to find out. Oh, and very sad going back and just, just Eugene's look on his face. I mean, that really said it all. It's a hard way to come back, but anyway, that was it was a nice it was a nice moment between the two of them. It seemed appropriate between the two of them, but just I mean sad. But they did and, and, and that's one example of they did a lot of showing, not telling this episode. A lot of visual storytelling uh this episode, which I think is is always really I much prefer to see that uh than for them to tell me what's going on. Oh, and the little camp on the bridge. What a brilliant idea. There's only two entrances there. Kind of safe either way. I guess you could fish over the end if you wanted to. Uh, but I thought that was, at least from a temporary kind of safe camp, I thought that was kind of a brilliant idea. There is some visual problems you can see from a distance if you're out on the water. There's something going on in the bridge there. Uh, but I thought just from a tactical standpoint, I thought that was kind of a brilliant idea. Um... Also, even though, and I have to say it, I love that Tara did not reveal the secret at the end of the episode. Even as uh, Rosita was really pushing her, we need to make bullets, anything, other guns, we need to find some stuff. I love that Tara kept the secret. Because there really isn't a reason to reveal it, and there is, there is a need of trust that has to be built. We still might run into them. Uh, in fact, I've, I've got an idea of how that might happen organically. Um, but it needs to be a choice thing. You have to be able to respect the idea that, that these women, this group has been through a lot and their one thing that they want to do is, is to be left alone. And I did like the fact that Tara was willing to keep that secret even amongst the pressure um, that Rosita was putting on her because, again, it reinforces that whole idea. What do you have to do and what do you choose to do? There are many things that we think that we have to do, but they're actual choices. And this was really a, a perfect example of what that was. Tara chose to keep that secret. And I think the group would ultimately respect that because they would expect that from anybody else that might have run into Alexandria also. But with the community on the bridge, like I'm saying, there's one thing they could come back for without violating the whole trust of the camp is there was a lot of brass in that sand. There was a lot of spent shell casings. And if you're going to make bullets, making the lead for bullets is easy. Making a brass casing, that's a lot more difficult. If they could go up and get all of those brass casings, that would be a huge boon for Eugene's uh, making bullets uh, plan. So I think that would, be, that would be a way to go back. And maybe, again, there might be some organic way to re-meet up with them, maybe with Cindy or someone, and do that from a safe, I didn't reveal your secret standpoint. All right, so I think that's going to wrap things up for this week. Two episodes left now. Two episodes left uh, uh, in, this in this half of the season. So we've got next week and then one more, and that'll be the mid-season break. So two more. Find out what's going on. I'm going to get Rick's head out of his butt. A lot of realizations for you can't keep hunting for the saviors. I think that's one thing that Heath and, and Tara's journey was going to point out is there's a lot less to find out there. And if they're going to keep expecting something new, something fancy, there's, that's only going to last for so long. So a lot of stuff to set up before the mid-season break. And we will talk about it all right here. So if you enjoyed the review, go ahead and hit that like button. 
Uh, thoughts, ideas, comments, throw those down in the section below. What is it that you want to see before the end of the season? What moves do you think Rick needs to do? And how is Daryl going to get out of uh, the sanctuary? Plus, they got Jesus and Carl coming there, so that's only going to complicate things. I'm going to have to check out and see how that is. All right, and you can always catch me on Twitter and Instagram. That's right, it's at Darren Jakes right there. But you can always hit the subscribe button right here. It's a little picture of me. You can come back for all the rest of your reviews as well as Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Westworld, which we also do black sales next year. I'm going to throw a little link up here to our latest review right here in the corner. Other than that, like I said, going to wrap it up. So, I am D, and I am out of here. Catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.